Yeah. So after Eric Hosmer got DFA'd, I was like, well, if Jed listens to the podcast, I got to give him a reason to get rid of um, Tucker Barnhart. So, <laughs> um, so to kind of go into this little catcher rant between the three of them, uh, defensively, Barnhart is actually our best catcher uh, analytic wise. And I think that this is a really cool because in terms of catching runs and catcher framing runs, he's the best. And I think that this is kind of where it's one of the situations where you should just start listening more to the eye test, right? When pitchers say that Jan Gomes is the reason why they're having like resurgent careers, you got to listen to that, right? And you can see it when the pitchers are on the mound with Gomes. They typically tend to bring their stuff. Um, but says, says, analytically, Barnard's the best. Uh, but it's a pretty slim margin. Like they're all close, man. They're all just kind of like basically dead average, like slightly above. Um, when it comes into pop time, which for those of you who don't know, pop time is when the ball hits the catcher's glove and then it, uh, and how long it takes for it to hit his glove to hit the second baseman or shortstop's glove on a steal attempt. Uh, two seconds even is league average. And Torrens was actually our best one, but he only had one attempt. Uh, and then a mile. <laughs> like, yeah, which I thought was hilarious. Torrens had the best arm. Um, when it comes to blocks above average, Amaya is our best catcher. Uh, historically, Barnhart has been credi- incredible, and Gomes has been pretty good. Uh, I kind of wrote a note of, I think they're just too old for this stuff at this point. Uh, you know, when you're in your mid-30s, man, it's harder to bounce up and get the ball. But going defense, and we've talked about this ad nauseum, but going into some more to kind of double down, um, Barnhart just has a noodle bat. His ex-WOBA is only 252, and his WOBA is 253. Um, and that's so bad, right? When you when I refer to the Fangraphs guideline chart of what is good and what's bad, that's that's not even on the chart. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's how bad of a woba the dude has. Basically, it just means that he's as close to almost an automatic out as he as he as you can get. He is so bad that he is at Austin Nola levels right now, and I wish that that was a joke because if you've seen Austin Nola stats, he's been atrocious, and Barnhart is right there with them um and when jordan mentioned miles master boney master boney also has the same woba as barnhart so just uh <laughs> put that out there um talking about the other two's bats gomes bat is much better analytically um so you can kind of live with that he's around the 300 mark for the woba and then amaya who had the small sample of course because he got sent back down only had a 258 woba which again is when you hear that you're like well that's the same level as barnhart but his ex woba was 442. Uh, that was because he's getting unlucky with all the scorches that he's hitting. Yeah. If he could somehow, and I don't expect Amaya to do that because it's just, again, we talk about regression. If Maya, though, could theoretically stay at that like 440 mark, that would put him on pace with a guy. You may have heard of him, young talent coming in New York Yankees named Aaron Judge. So, you know, just kind of <laughs> putting that out there. And that kind of goes along with what Amaya's prospect reports have always said the prospect writers on Fangrass, for example, has him as a bat first backup. Um, and that the guy didn't like his, the way he framed and he didn't like his pop time. And he said that the Tommy John, the, cause of Miguel Maya came off Tommy John for those who don't know would hurt it. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, and Miguel Amaya's only attempts in the bigs, he threw above average pop time. So clearly he's working on his defense if the bat can be what we think it could potentially be, I mean, even if, you, even if you kind of have a realistic approach of what you think his bat could be, it's still such an upgrade that we've hammered at home a million times. And I'll hammer home one more time because Jed, if you're listening, just bring him up. <laughs> just you can make you can make Barnhart go away. It's a cheap contract. Make the problem go away. There's depth behind him. You know, if Amaya or Gomes goes down, obviously you need depth. Fine, whatever. But you can find a catcher somewhere somehow. Just bring him up, Jed. It's time, and that's all I got for that. To uh, to play off of what you're you're saying, like it, I definitely understand the statistical analysis, and it's always appreciated. And like I said, sabermetrics are a huge part of baseball now. But kind of circling back a little bit, you've got Smiley saying that uh, Jan Gomes is the reason he's been throwing so well, which is game calling. You've got before he also got sent down, you had Hayden Wesneski saying he was blown away with Miguel Amaya's game preparation and game calling. Have you heard anybody say anything at all about Tucker Barnhart's game calling ability? Because I have not. 
you know, it's one thing if you want to rely on the metrics and that's great. But again, the job of a catcher is to be the quarterback on the baseball diamond. And if you've got a guy that isn't calling games well, which I think the win loss record would indicate, you got to change it. Yeah. And I don't know with pitch com pitchers can call their own games. I don't know on the Cubs who does. I haven't looked into that, but yeah, who knows? Like, Cause I don't know, maybe even when Barnhart gets behind there, maybe the pitcher who normally would just let Gomes or Amaya take care of it is like, I'll call it today. And maybe that's why they're getting rocked a bit more. I don't know. Right. But clearly, yeah, like you said, (laughs) like, like I just said, imagine getting this guy on your, like on your call sheet for the day. 